Hi, this is Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and this video features the adorable My Favorite Nut stamp set and coordinating dies from Neat and Tangled. This set sold out quickly when it was released earlier this month, but it should be back in stock soon. Please check the links below or on my blog and click on the store notifications so you know right away when the stamps and dies are available. What I love most about this stamp set is its versatility. I always look for that when buying my own stamp sets. This was made for Valentine's Day, but it can be used year-round by mixing and matching the images with other stamp sets. If you want similar fonts, then simply mix and match with other stamp sets illustrated by Elena Rosakis. That being said, I have to use this to create a Valentine's card. I'm not sure if I'll be giving it to my son or my husband, but either one of my guys will love it, simply because it features adorable squirrels. I'm going to use the largest image as a balloon floating up in the sky with some love letters and acorns falling from it as if though the leaves blowing in the wind. I'm also going to use the parquet stencil to watercolor a skyline, mimicking buildings. I have a leftover piece of watercolor cardstock and there is enough space on it to stamp all of my images. I'm going to use my misty so I can stamp several of the images all at once. I place all four of the images I want and close the lid to pick up the stamps. I will restamp the three smaller images since I want multiples in case I need more than one of each on my layout. I use the magic embossing bag to eliminate stray specks since I'll be heat embossing these images. Then I ink up the images with Versafine Onyx Black Pigment Ink and close the lid to stamp the images. Now that all the stamping is done, I apply clear embossing powder and set it with my heat tool. I'm ready to watercolor all of the images as well as the background. I've chosen my nine colors and you can find those in the description below or on my blog post for the video, which is also in the description below. I add water to the images before adding color so that the color travels across the cardstock easily. That way most of my work is done for me. I simply smoosh the mini distress inks on my craft sheet and use those to watercolor. This has been my favorite way to color for quite some time. I just love all the color options. After the images are colored, I set that panel aside to dry while I watercolor the background. This is going to be quick and easy too. I add water to the top two thirds of the panel and swipe both of the pink shades down from the top. Then I dry this panel manually with my heat tool because I want to be able to work on the stenciled cityscape at the bottom of the card and the pink section needs to be dry so the colors don't blend together. I tape down the panel and the stencil with removable tape. Then I use a large brush to add two shades of grey ink and also black ink to the panel through the stencil. I use a paper towel to mop up the excess water when it gets to be too much. That way when I lay down the next layer of colour, more of the pattern shows up. I also stop at different heights so it looks like skyscrapers. The last thing I want to add to this panel is some splatter in both the greens that I use to colour the images. I just use a small brush with lots of water and then tap on the handle to release the droplets. While I leave that panel to dry under a heavy stack of books, I can die cut the images. I find that when I place a whole bunch of dies on a big sheet of cardstock, some of them move in the machine and then the dies are slightly off, even if I'm using tape to hold them down. This is why I cut apart all of the images now. I can still put a whole bunch of them in the machine at one time, but they have to be separated on their own little pieces of paper. That way, if one die shifts, it doesn't affect anything that is attached to it. After everything has dried, I can create a mock layout and prepare to stamp my sentiment. I'm not sure if I want to use a simple sentiment that reads, I choose you, Valentine, or if I want to stack a few lines to create a much longer sentiment. I do like the idea of being able to include more images, and with a longer sentiment, I wouldn't be able to do that, so I have to keep the sentiment at two or three lines. I decide that I want to create a custom sentiment that says, I choose you, nutty little Valentine, so I'm going to use the phrase, little nut. I'll do some masking to create the word nutty. I also want to add a balloon string to the acorn, so I need space for the string to hang. I trim a piece of hemp cord and use multimedia mat to manipulate it into a loop. Once the multimedia has dried, the loop will hold its shape permanently. I tie a simple knot for attaching to the point of the acorn, so it'll look like it's tied to it. Then I squeeze out some multimedia on my fingers and apply it to the cord so it's quite saturated. Then I twirl the cord around my fingers a few times to make it soft and also to work it into a loop. Once I have it in the shape I want, I set it aside to dry on my craft mat. That way it doesn't stick to anything. Now it's time to stamp the sentiment. I'm only going to stamp the first and third line right now and hand stamp the middle line with an acrylic block since I have to mask off parts of it and stamp it in four parts. 
Just like with the images, I stamped the sentiment with Versafine Onyx Black Pigment Ink, applied clear embossing powder, and set it with my heat tool. To create the middle line, I'm going to use two phrases, Little Nut and You Are My. I'm going to create the word nutty by masking off little and stamping nut, then stamping another T from the end of the word nut, and finally using the letter Y from U. When the word nutty is finished, I can mask off nut and stamp the word little. Once the sentiment is complete, I can adhere the panel to the card base. As I've mentioned in previous videos where I've watercolored, these warped panels require a lot of strong adhesive so they stay flat on the card base. Now it's time to adhere all of the images onto the card. I use foam tape to add dimension. I adhere the string with a micro glue dot hidden behind the knot. I'm not sure where I want the string to fall, so I'm just going to leave it for now and go back to adhering images. Sometimes working around something and staring at it for a few minutes does the trick. I use a combination of glue dots and foam tape to adhere the love letter and acorns. Then I take more multimedium to hold the cord down on the card. I weigh it down with an acrylic block until it dries. I had a really hard time deciding whether or not I wanted to add that final acorn at the bottom. I didn't like that it was right in the center of the card horizontally, but I felt that the card needed a visual anchor since most of the colored images were at the top. Initially, I finished the card without that last acorn, but after I started photographing, it looked empty, so I went back to film the addition, and I'm glad I did. Sometimes your eyes will play tricks, but the camera never lies. Now my card is done. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information about my cards. Thanks so much for watching!